Thank you for attending the week of kindness. Coming up next is another powerful, impactful, amazing speaker. Get your notepad out, get your pen. Let's get ready. And Sometimes it's just like forever is not enough. You ever been with somebody like that? Baby, ooh, we were the perfect night we had together. Baby, ooh, we, I want this moment to last forever. Funny how fast time can put on its wings when we're together. It's heaven for. Together, our love is true. Forever is not enough time to spend with you. Baby, ooh, we what a perfect dream we have together. Baby, ooh, we I've got your sweetness. Wrestling in me Funny how fast time Can put on its wings When we're together It's heaven I would particularly want to say thank you for taking time out of your life and coming here and spending it with us tonight. Oh, John Michael. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to, to be as moved by your song as I am, but um, with loss of my husband a couple of years ago, Oh. Boy, that hit home. <laughs> oh, somebody very similar said the same thing about the song that what you just said. It was they lost somebody and they had uh, related to that song. That right. Way. So I'm going to sound like a blithering idiot here because I'm, I'm trying to pull myself together. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. No, listen. Um, I am so um, I'm so thrilled to have you here, and I want to send a big giant hug to our wonderful Pepper. Jay, who has been so instrumental for the past three decades in your life. How did you all meet? 
Uh, we were actually, uh, years ago, we met at a place, a resort called Highland Springs Resort outside of Palm Springs. Very similar place to what they used to have in the Catskill Mountains, where people would go, families would go and they'd have uh, activities and they'd have entertainment and they have all these different things. I was in the lounge next to the main showroom and uh, she came in one night when I was performing in the lounge and said, you know what? I could make you better. <laughs> <laughs> I could move you into the main showroom, she said. <laughs> oh, so you were like uh, like in the middle of dirty dancing here somewhere, right? <laughs> it was exactly like that. It was a, a resort just like that. And uh, she was baby and I was Johnny. <laughs> I love, oh my God, that's so wonderful. <laughs> you guys, Pepper, if you're there, just pop in for a second and say hi. I, I just adore you. So Hi, my <laughs> darling. How you doing? <laughs> you guys are just the cutest couple. I just love you guys. So thank you so much for that amazing song. Um, I should have, I should have, I should have tried to keep my distance for obvious reasons. So I'm not sitting here blur blubbering and tearing up. And, and John, it's just so wonderful. Tell me, uh, please, where are you right now? Because your home looks amazing. I love the, the the Native American Tahoe look, you know, kind of thing. Where are you? We're in my living room. You could actually zoom out and show them the... <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got laundry everywhere. Oh, we were you got laundry? Right, we're <laughs> you right at our ranch in the living room, right next to the fireplace, you know, yeah. in Nevada. And, you know, what's funny is somebody told me the other day, if you have real friends, you don't clean up before they get there. <laughs> I got some good friends because I don't clean up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, my gosh. You've been honored so many times. You've been in Nashville. You you have a a, a ranch in is it uh, Nevada? In we Peru? have a ranch outside of Las Vegas, five acre uh -huh. ranch, and Pepper just got finished feeding the chickens and the animals and everything. <laughs> well, I stayed inside where it's warm. So. <laughs> no wonder she said it was cold. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have uh, one of my kids decided to take up chickens, and of course we live right outside of Houston, so that was kind of an interesting ordeal. Uh, and 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 we failed miserably at it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so, yeah, then, well, she's we have a lot of chickens, and she names all of them, so she knows them, and they all come <laughs> oh running when they God. see her. You know. <laughs> so tell me, John Michael, when what inspired you to write that song? I know you got a thousand songs, and 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 this was just really special. I think you, I think this was selected, um, especially for us because of the. The angels involved. <laughs> they knew what I needed today. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you, you, you just care about somebody so much. You just think, even if I spent forever with that person, it's just not enough time. You know, and you know, just, uh, it was just a feeling. It was just a thought. And and, uh, I, and that's what inspired me to write that song. Just uh, that, you know, how, being with somebody. Like Pepper and I, we're, we spent 24 hours a uh, a day, you know, and it's just like uh, we never get tired of each other. That that's that's true because, you know, I used to tell people I married my best friend. Yeah, you know, because that that's what it's about. I mean, you know, all the all the other all the other stuff that 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 goes away goes away, and and then you're stuck with two people, and if you guys aren't friends, it ain't gonna last. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, having a friendship with anybody is a very special thing. But if you have a good friendship with your partner, that's even more special. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I've got to tell you a quick story. So you might be able to use a line from this and something you create is, uh, uh, you know, we were going through uh, 18 months of his diagnosis. And and I remember sitting at, at my dresser one day and he's laying in bed, you know, it's just one after one of his treatments. And I said, baby. And he says, what? And I said, it's not fair. And I said, and he says, what's not fair? He says, I said, you promised to grow old with me. <laughs> and he turns around, he says, baby, look in the mirror. We did. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we sure did. We're both gray now, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, John Michael, what's what's coming? I know you've got you've got awards happening. Pepper's got awards happening. You guys are so busy, and and yet you still find time to create amazing songs like "Forever Is Not Enough." 
Well, uh, we're on our way back to Nashville uh, in about four weeks to record five more songs. We spent a lot of time going back and forth. Um, and, yeah, several performances. and several performances when we get there. Uh, it's a, it's just a real uh, joy to be there. I don't know if you ever been to Nashville or not. Oh yeah, uh huh. You know, it's a songwriter's town. You know, for singer songwriters, yeah. and uh, that's why we go there. We go there and uh, record all of our songs, and then we come back here and relax. <laughs> Is there a specific studio that you like? Because I know that studios are well known in by the industry for having a certain sound or an echo. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Well, you know, it, that's true. You know, different mm -hmm. studios have different sounds. Now, they generally use a, a lot of the same musicians. Well, I mean, we yeah. use the same musicians that maybe it would be on Garth Brooks, uh, you know, recordings yeah. and people like that. So we try, we, we want to compete in the industry with the very top people. So we go there and we record at the studios with a lot of the same people so that we can compete. And then I, I write in a very commercial way, the very format structured way that allows radio play, uh, radio stations to play our songs. And that's how we- Larry Beard Studios. Yeah, Larry Beard Studios. That's why we've been successful because of the, being there in Nashville with those kind of people. And, and you know, I'm curious because uh, of course in the film world, <clears throat> excuse me, in the film world, we know that a script shouldn't be longer than 90 pages because normally it takes one minute per page, right? Correct, yes. And the reason that films are like have to fit into this 90 minute segment is because that way they can show it five or six times in one theater in one day. It makes Correct. that kind of money. Unless you've got permission to do an epic, you know, you don't get more than 90 minutes. How it, what kind of formula is that for songwriters? Well, you got to hit the chorus within the first 40 seconds. So you have your that. intro, you have your verse, you have a pre-chorus, and then you have your chorus. So it has to happen right around 40 seconds, 45 seconds. I had no clue. I didn't know that. And then uh, once you have your chorus, at the end of your chorus, you should have your title of the song. It should be repeated several times. Oh, my gosh. You guys need to do a workshop on this. You know. <laughs> and, you know, the song is generally run about three minutes, three and a half minutes. But if right. you follow the correct structure, it's right around uh, 258 to about uh, 320. Interesting. So, you, wow. Uh, guys, if you're an aspiring uh, songwriter uh, or singer, I mean, that's that's some golden nuggets right there, huh? So is this is this something that you've been, I mean, you say you, you, you write commercially so that it's it's acceptable to radio stations. So I guess they have the same kind of format, huh? Well, yeah, because they want to fit in so many songs. You know, every three songs, they have a commercial. They want yeah. to fit in songs. Uh, so they want songs to be a certain way. Uh, right. It's called format for radio. Uh, format it's just for like radio. a script. You know, now yeah. it doesn't mean you have to write that way, but if you want to get on the radio and have a yeah. chance to be on the radio, right. you have to write in that format structure. A lot of people don't like to do that. That's why they don't get radio uh, play. You know, there's certain requirements. You have to know what your goal is. What is your goal? That's what I ask songwriters who want to know, ask me questions. I said, number one, figure out what your goal is. Is it to get radio play? If it is, then here's the parameters you have to fit into. If you don't want to really care about radio play, you can write any way you want. Oh, you know, that's sometimes my songs, I have a few songs that aren't structured for radio play, but I write them for the benefit of the listener who buys the CD Got something it. extra that you know they get to listen to right now let me ask you this so how has the digital streaming revolution kind of affected any of that uh of that component of your writing well you know they have an algorithm that uh digital recorded uh streaming stations they also look for songs that are structured in that way but as far as royalties, it's the industry's really changed because it used to be where people would go in and buy a record for uh, 99 cents or a dollar or uh, uh, LP for $6 or $12. And the record company and the writer got a big portion of that. Today, that doesn't happen because people don't buy those 
uh, commodities anymore. They just stream the music. Right. And they download them and all they have to do is listen to the commercials. You know? <laughs> so, well, okay. So my granddaughter got a record player because I guess these things are coming back, right? Got a record player and we took her to like Barnes and Nobles to get some albums and John, I almost, I almost fainted. I mean, every album was $29, 30 $44, $50. Yeah. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> well, because, you know, they, there's only certain companies that are making those and the cost is so exuberant that it, it it's not worth it. If they, if they only charge like under $10, they can't make a profit. Wow. Yeah. I was a little stunned as, as a boomer, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I when remember. we were young, you know, you could go down and buy an album for, you know, three, four bucks. You, know, you get yeah. 12 songs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to ask is, is in your future. So you, you, I know the formula, I know what you're trying to appeal to and all of that. How, how do you get into the world of being nominated for awards and, uh, uh, and, and that level? What would you recommend to an aspiring singer songwriter? Well, again, if you, you have to know your goal, if your yeah. goal is to be an independent artist um, and get radio play, get people to listen to you, you, you have kind of pretty much have to fit in that structure. And if you do, and you're lucky enough, Somebody gives you an award and you get noticed. And then that causes other people to listen like, oh, he got this award. What's he doing? And they listen to that. And then all of a sudden you're up there with all these other people. You're nominated for things. We were nominated for an award. And Pepper said, well, you're up against all these major artists. And the chances of you winning are slim to none. And I said, well, you never know. And then we, we won. Oh, you know, so. is that the outstanding male singer in 2022? I think what was that no, the one? That, that was, I think, 2019 singer songwriter of the year. Oh, I just want to mention Tony to anyone out there that's an indie artist, an independent artist. Yeah, there's a whole world out there. You can connect with other independent artists on the internet, yeah. and there are radio stations that are just for that, and then. They have different uh, charts, radio charts you can get on. Uh, John started out in Europe, actually, on radio charts and being one of the top 200 artists in Europe before he ever hit a chart in the United States. So I would explore and connect with other indie artists and uh, see what's out there and uh, get aboard. So I'm, I'm in the middle of ACL and South by Southwest over here in Austin. You know, I mean, that that's a... Willie Whalen and the gang, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so there yeah. are a lot of us. I mean, that's what Austin's known for, right? Is off ACL is Austin city limits. And that was the, one of the first cable music shows ever created. And, and yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was right after Lukenbach, right? <laughs> the big right. Right. Festival. So, uh, and, and you know, what's funny, John Michael is my experience in my life of, of, of getting to know, recording artists was usually uh usually happened in rodeo performances in texas that's with you know the first time i ever met people in anderson and people like that and it was just amazing uh but they they kind of all stood out and 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 uh, you know away from the normal mere mortal i always kind of saw them as this angelic being you know? <laughs> that uh, and and also being raised in movie theaters you can imagine you know this the, the movies i saw but about the, about singers but you seem to have it all together and and i love i love that you know pepper has been an amazing influence and she's got a wealth of knowledge that i mean people can't you can't pay for that it's it's experience right well it's a formula and yeah. you know if you're willing to follow the formula and learn the formula understand songwriting it's not just about the what you write on the lyric. You know, it's about the right number of syllables. How does it sound? Because maybe a lyric doesn't really make that much sense, but it sounds good to sing it. And that's yeah. really more important. Right. Uh, and you're not writing a book. So you just an idea of one thing. What does the chorus say? Very yeah. simple. Uh, but, you know, it, it's simple once you finish it. Like, oh, that's a very simple song. But it's complicated to get it get it to that yeah. point where people will listen to it and like it. Well, that makes sense. So, um, 
Okay, so listen, I do want to acknowledge that Pepper was uh, voted Outstanding AC Music Producer of the Year by the Producer's Choice Honors. Yay, and uh, Wait, what? I said, yay! <laughs> yay, Pepper! <laughs> well, you know, that's another element of recording. You know, if you're going to go in the studio, uh, you need to have a good producer, someone who... Uh, when you're in the studio, that can uh, take control and, and uh, run everything. As an artist, sometimes you don't have the best perception of what is right and what's good. Although by the time we get in the studio, we know pretty much what we want because we work out everything here in our studio. So when we go to Nashville, we sit down with the session leader who writes out the charts for us. And, um, and so he, the session leader and the a producer work with your musicians to get the right sound and everything. It's a, a lot of things have to be done well. You know, you, you have to record in a really good studio. Now, I know there's a lot of independent artists that record in their home studio. And that's good. You can do that. But when you're competing against the major studios and their sound, what they're doing, it's very difficult. Because yeah. you can hear immediately there's a difference in the sound be production between a Nashville recording studio and a home studio. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, even with film, there's a difference in the editing and the final, yeah. the final cut, you know? That, that's a good example, yeah. yeah. You can tell yeah. an independent film is different from a major... Oh, uh, yeah. Spielberg film. <laughs> film. <laughs> so you were, uh, you got the the crossover artist of the year in 2021, and on top of that, you were a New Music Awards fan favorite 2021 by the Independent Music Network. I just love that. Would you explain uh, what you mean by crossover? I mean, you know, pop and country or rock and pop. You're and right, country. exactly that. You know, do you have a country genre, you have uh, top 40, and you have uh, adult contemporary. Usually when you do, uh, your songs come out, you'll be on one of those. And if you're lucky, you're on two. We were on three. Oh my and goodness. <laughs> so that's another thing. We The way we write, it hits all three areas. So, you know, we got air, airplay on three different genres of uh, radio stations, country, pop, and adult contemporary and wow. some of the jazz stations yeah no that's wonderful so the the you were also you know it's funny but a lot of people think and i know so many friends that are that are like you fizz anthony and and schroeder who who actually write songs on commission so to speak but yeah. uh you wrote a song for a friend of yours for his wedding that ended up winning a bunch of awards i think that's wonderful <laughs> Yeah, he was just over the house uh, last night watching TV with us. Yeah, he was getting married, and he said, John, would you sing a song for uh, at our wedding? And I said, what do you want me to sing? He goes, I don't care. Just pick a song, you know, just while we're getting married, um, you know, maybe sing some kind of song. And I said, oh, sure, I'll do that. And so I was uh, a couple of days later, I was thinking, maybe I'll just write him a song, you know. And I sat down and started writing this song, um, I called uh, uh, I Want to Paint You a Love Song. So I played it for him, and I sang it for him. And he goes, you can't sing that. And I go, why not? He says, I want to sing it. Oh, <laughs> cute. So it became, uh, during the ceremony, He I, I played guitar, and he sang that song to his bride. I love it. Now uh, I know we need to, we, uh, the, the boss is back, so we need to cut the show. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you for being part and playing with us. Pepper, I, this is just the beginning. We've got so much more to do. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I also want you to look up, uh, is it My Heart Can't Breathe, which is another amazing song that you've written that got multiple yeah. awards as well. Yeah, we've been fortunate. All of our songs have gotten on the charts. You well, you you know the formula. You guys are pros. That's, That's right. why you get people like Pepper and John on your side. That's exactly why. Yeah, this has been amazing, you guys. This was so insightful. I well, really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having us, and it was our pleasure to be here. And you know, we could do this all day long, just talk. I know, know, I know. <laughs> 
Amazing. So if you guys ever need anything in Austin, you know you've got a friend. Let me know. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Austin, yeah. I love that place. Yeah. <laughs> most, most singer songwriters do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a lot of a lot of music goes on there. It's the third mm. coast, man. It's the third coast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. God bless. And again, thank you for your wonderful talent. Thank, thank God you for your for wonderful your pepper. Kindness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that just as much as I did. Thank you so much for all of that great information. Hey, we're not done yet. So just relax. We're going to continue on with our next speaker in just a few moments.